Joe Biden has sat down for only seven one on one interviews with journalists this year, but he made time for Drew Barrymore. The president and first lady talked with the celebrity in their last interview of the year uh, where they were asked hard hitting <laughs> questions like these. Has he ever surprised you with something that really did surprise you? Well, I, one thing that Joe gives me every year is a poem. Is it true you proposed five times? And what was it that finally won her over? I don't know what finally, I, I think I know what finally won her over. So you uh, believe in love at first sight? I do. Here to react, Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Joe, uh, dive right in. What do you think about that interview? No, Carly, I think if I propose to a gal after time number three when she says no, I, I think I'm saying, all right, three strikes, I'm out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on here. Uh, but it, it is re remarkably, you know, sad in a profound way that, that Mr. Biden said recently there were more important things to do than to visit the southern border. He said this while he was in Arizona. And apparently one of those more important things was to sit down with Drew Barrymore to discuss his poetry and multiple marriage proposals that occurred probably before Ms. Barrymore was even born. So, so overall, this is a president, guys, that that has done exactly one interview since the midterms. And it wasn't with Brett Baer, Shannon Bream, Peter Ducey, Jackie Heinrich, someone resembling a solid journalist, but with the gal from ET. And, and this avoidance to be <laughs> held accountable for all the things plaguing this country, it's only going to continue, guys, right, in 2023. He's not going to answer for inflation being five times higher since taking office, violent crime out of control in cities like Philadelphia or Chicago or Portland, fentanyl coming over this border, killing record numbers of younger people in this country, education system that has us far behind other advanced countries in the world. This is a president that doesn't want to answer questions about all these things because he has no answers for them. He'll just continue to run the country by pleading the fifth. <laughs> Joe, you know, it doesn't surprise me that he uh, proposed five times. I mean, how many times did he run for president and get told no? And then finally he waited around, a 100-year plague ushered him into the White House. Uh, but when we talk yeah. about, you know, Kamala Harris doing these, getting these write-ups about how great she's done, and now, you know, the president sitting down with Drew Barrymore instead of real journalists, how, how much do they want to spit in our face and tell us it's raining? How much does the administration think we'll just believe this stuff? It's a great point about the, the running for president part, Joey. I believe he ran three times, and one time was in 1988, right? So we're talking 35 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's the thing, right? It is spitting uh, in the face and, and, and saying that it is raining because here we have Kamala Harris, for example, who's never held a press conference while she's been vice president. Mike Pence held multiple press conferences. Joe Biden has held, I think it was, five solo press conferences this year. You want to put that in context? Donald Trump held 35 press wow. conferences in his final year, right? So, yeah, as far as accessibility, there is none with this president, with this vice president, and we'll continue to see it in 2023 and even when they run for president again, if they if that is the ticket in 2024, because I guess it worked for him the first time. Uh, Joe, so uh, you you talked about those journalists, and Peter Ducey is getting, <laughs> getting us more news than anyone in the yeah. entire room. That's why when he asks questions yeah. and he can get the president to talk, all the other journalists follow his lead many times because he simply doesn't want to talk to us. So uh, I want to step back though from a communication standpoint you know the white house spends time thinking about various interviews let's put him here this is the takeaway we we would get so help me walk through what was the logic they thought drew barrymore that's perfect we would get <laughs> this what is this or was it just to snub their nose at all the journalists that show up in the briefing room every day I think the thought process is, was, where can we get a softball interview? And then somebody like Ron Klain, the chief of staff, stepped in and said, no, I don't even want softball at this point. I want t-ball with a beach ball on the team. What is the easiest possible interview we can do? All right, so The View, I guess they're on vacation for Christmas, so that's out. Yeah. Uh, MSNBC, nobody watches. So let's go to Drew Barrymore, uh, who has an after I didn't even know she had a show, and I cover media, who has like an afternoon show, and we'll just make this as comfortable for our 80-year-old president as possible. Yeah, maybe they were thinking the youth vote or maybe the female vote. I'm not sure. I mean, Drew Barrymore to me seems so sweet, and uh, she's obviously going to jump at the chance of getting an interview with the president. But if the of president course. doesn't want to be criticized for doing the Drew Barrymore interview, then he's got to do the serious interviews as well, which he clearly hasn't done. Joe, thanks jo for joining jo us this morning. Joe, I think you coined the best phrase, by the way. It's not a softball interview anymore. It's now a t-ball with a beach ball on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. That's how I taught my son to play. So. I think, I think it was Drew again, Barrymore because the president identifies with her character in 50 first dates. He just wakes up in a different world every day. Oh, boy.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.